in. And what I would like to do is um, is go over our our different trading entries and how we leverage our indicators to try to give us um, low risk, uh, high reward uh, trade entries. So the first entry that I want to look at is is really the initiation of of, of, a, of a trend. And they're gonna these are trades they're gonna come and then I'll answer questions at the end just just so I can get through everything and then I'll I'll, I'll answer any questions. And these are trades that come right off the 50. Now optimally, you you you're gonna want an oscillator signal which you have right here. And optimally, you're going to want to have the X and the dot. And these are telling you that the NASDAQ and the Russell are moving in your direction short on a multi time frame basis to the downside. So we're taking an E-mini short trade in the same direction as the Russell and the NASDAQ are currently moving on a multi time frame basis down. The fact that these dots are the darkest color than the maroon color, you can see you can get this lighter pink color and then there's an intermediate red color tells you that the multi time frame alignment of those markets to the downside is very strong. So it gets a little weaker here on the fast, a little weaker here on the slow, as the light as as these get lighter. Now this is the fast component. The moving average that we use is faster, and on the dots, the moving average that we use is slower. So the slower dots have more specificity. The faster ones have more sensitivity. And you see they turn, you see how on this turn, the fast assessment went green, but the slow assessment stayed red, censoring any potential counter trend trade. But this is your perfect trade short right off the 50. And that is one I consider to be our bread and butter kind of trade. Now, when you have this confirmation, you have to trade with the three line. There were a couple of trades today where we didn't have the three line and it was kind of aggravating because we couldn't take the trade short. Um, but I think I think we should keep it as a hard and fast rule not to trade without it. Because every every time I try to take one without it, it winds up being a loser. So we have to trade with that yellow outline for a short, the green, the blue outline for, for an up close. And you can color that any color you like and make it any thickness you like. Now, what makes this trade so great is this are these indicators of money flow. All three of them are red. What we must have is the middle one red. And we must have the upper one at the very least yellow and the bottom one at the very least yellow. You don't want to trade against the color of any of these quants. But if you have the middle green, a uh, middle red, and the upper and lower yellow, you've got yourself a trade. Here, you had all three red. And the likelihood of this trade losing is extraordinarily small, simply because you're trading in the direction of the NASDAQ and Russell on a multi time frame basis, order flow, I'm sorry, money flow is pouring out of this market. And if you look at background bias here, this is telling you that the E mini is aligned to the downside 
on a multi time frame basis. Now, this is the, the dark pink is the strongest. This is the intermediate. And the light pink is the weakest. So you're aligned to the downside on, on multiple markets. Money is flowing out. And you really have everything. The oscillator is crossing the 50. And down you go. Now, here is another trade and another winner. And this is the trade I took. This is the last trade I took in the room. Right here. You got a break of the 50, two thirds of the candle closes below. You've got an oscillator signal. You have a confirmant, you have the X, no dot. But that means that the fastest moving average, but the NASDAQ and Russell are moving with you on the trade. There's the three line aligned with you and down you go. No huge winner, but we'll take a nice winner. It's, it's still good. Now, obviously, there's no counter trend trade right into the 50. You just can't take that trade. Now, here's your next trade. Same thing again. And we took this trade too in the room. Oscillator signal. This one's a little bit riskier because you don't have the confirmatory fast and slow NASDAQ Russell lines with you. But you do have the down bias background bias telling you that the e-mini is aligned to the downside on multiple time frames right here now this line is is very similar to the volume weighted average price it's a it's a moving average based on volume and we're trading right off of it so we've got an area of dual resistance the 50 and it's called the halfback. And on the trade, we've got the major quant red, and we've got our key intermediate red, and the minor is yellow, which is acceptable for this trade. We're in, and we got ourselves a nice short trade. Now, we're only talking right now about trend trades off the 50, not talking about any other kind of setup. Now you can see here, you've got an oscillator signal, but you have no entry. And if you trade with specificity, you're not going to get an entry on every winner. We had no three line. I have not I have not closed NinjaTrader today. So there has been no realignment or change in color of any candle halo. This is the way it was in a live market. So we have no three line. It was successful. We could not take it. Now here, it was just really unfortunate. But on the live market here, oh my gosh. I don't want to change that. Okay. Live market here. This is not a trade because we don't have the intermediate. And we don't, we don't have the intermediate. It's yellow. Now, you can shift one candle over, but then you have no three line and you're trading right into that half back line. So now this is, this is pre-market. So you have no trade. Now it's going to censor winners, but when you take a trade, it's going to, it's going to verify that the trade is a good one. So let's go into the trading session yesterday. Actually, I'm going to go the day before because yesterday was. I only want to take. Okay, here's a trade. Now, again, this is recalibrated because it's not live. So I'm pretty sure it. The trades that I show you are going to be pretty accurate. 
Now, this is this line is the market open price at 930. So when you're below it, it's an area of resistance. So right here, here's a trade with dual resistance, triple quants, oscillator signal, confirmatory dots, and down you go. Now this had no three line and no intermediate or minor. Now I don't know how it was in real time. If we took it, it would still have, it would have been a winner. It would have gone four. That's one, three, four. But I'm not even going to look at it as a trade. Now, see, this is a much tougher trade because you haven't broken the 50. And if you go in here, you're going to get, you're not going to make it. Uh, but uh, what I want to do is I want to move to the morning where the market has the most volume and we get the nicest trades. When you start looking at four o'clock in the afternoon, that's when you start seeing um, entries on really, really, really lousy volume. Now, here is just a real tough short. You've got everything that you want. Um, you've got the oscillator signal is buried in there because you can see the oscillator crosses the 50, crosses the 50 line here. You've got your intermediate. You don't have your major. You don't care about it. You don't have your minor, but you're trading right into the 50. So that's a riskier trade. You want to take the trades on a break of the 50. And the problem is, is I don't want to give you trades that I don't think are very, very low risk. We're looking for a wick or a reversal to get into the trade. And as it matures down, there is no wick. You don't get a wick until here. And the move is still is already so extended. And you're getting these up signals here telling you that you're oversold. I think it's really tough to chase this down. I mean, when you're on the right edge, you don't know it's going to be this huge move. So I think this is a very tough trade. They have no short here because of the green quant. This is a counter trend trade. and We're only looking at trend trades. Now, here's a trade you might want to seriously consider. You still have to break the 50, but you've got everything. It's still... The initiation of a trade, it's it's a little pre, pre, it's a little bit premature. Is it? A, this is not going to be your ninety to ninety five percent winner because you have to break the fifty. But on this trade, you've got so much confirmation to the downside. It's 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 almost. I I don't want to say pathetic, but you've got your dual dark dots. You've got your three line. You haven't broken the fifty. But you have to have a little bit of discretion, and then down you go. Now, here's your perfect trade again, right here. There's your, you broke the 50, both confirmatory dots, oscillator signal, three line, intermediate. Now, you have a little piece of the major that's green, and I would, I would ignore it. You've got to trade down to the pivot, which you have to be very concerned about. You've got plenty of space, and you got a winner. I mean, I'm giving, I'm giving you my take on the trades. They're occurring right around the 50, and, and they, are the initi they are the initiation of a new of a, wow, the market's really moving. The initiation of a new trend. Here's your perfect trade, except you've got a little bit of major. This major is 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 a very minor component of the trade. I'm sorry, the minor. The major and the intermediate are important. The, the intermediate is by far the line you must have to trade. If you have the major, it's icing on the cake. If you have this little bit of green, I would still take the trade. Here, not a perfect trade, but look at all the confirmation on the entry. 
the NASDAQ and Russell already down on multiple time frames, hard down. And you're just taking a trade and following in the E-mini in their direction. Again, following with the E-mini in their direction. Now, here's a perfect long trade. Now, I believe in real time, this would have been a winner. I don't know if the three line would have been with the trade. If it was, here's your perfect long. Right off the 50 to the upside. And if you look up here, you have that confirmatory X. You just had to have had the three line. So let's just take the trades off the 50. Now here you have no entry and you cannot chase the trade. Here you have no entry long. You break the 50, but you have no pullback at all. Not even a wick. I mean, you can just chase it up, but there's no way you can guarantee you're not going to walk into a retracement and a wick, get stopped out, and then have to re-enter. Now, here again is another perfect trade if you have the three line. Again, because this is recalibrated, I don't know. You have the intermediate. The major and the minor are yellow. You've got the confirmatory dot here. You've got only the small swing pivot above it. And you can see this trade just rocks to the upside. Now, here's another one, and this is one that you can validate right here. There's the long trade. You've got the oscillator signal. You've got the major. You've got their intermediate, the candle surrounded by blue. You've got the three line. It comes right up to resistance. This line is, is the market open. And at this point, it may, it may not be disadvantageous to close the trade because you're coming up to a small swing pivot and that's major resistance. Because if you don't, it's going to come back and stop you out. You're still you, you've you've made money you've made money on this trade you've made nice money, but it's not going to break this area of resistance. Now here's a little bit riskier because you're you're uh, you know a long ways off the fifty, but you've still got the wick touching the fifty. Here's the here's the oscillator signal. There's the mine uh, the intermediate. There's the minor. You've got the okay to take the trade, and down you go for a winner. The key here is it's very difficult to find a loser as long as you're trading with volume and you obey the rules. Now, we're not going to look at counter trend trades. We're just taking trade initiations off the 50. Now, here's another one, but you don't have the three line. I'm sorry, you don't have the quants. Can't take this trade long. Now, this entry, if you had the three line, you can't take. It's sitting above a red dot. It tells you that on the slower time frame, the NASDAQ and Russell, excuse me, are still trending down. Now, as the trade matures, you look for some kind of pullback, but there's no wick. So you just can't jump into the trade because, again, Sitting on the right edge, you don't know that you're going to get a, you're not going to walk into a pullback and then a continuation. There's nothing you can do. Now, here's another trade. Now, you're going to have the intermediate here in real time, only for a brief second, but you need to get in on the entry. If you had the three line, and I believe you would have had it in real time, you have another winner. And you're sitting on huge support that's the session open price and up you go so we really haven't found uh, a valid trade that would have given you a loser a loser and we've gone through the whole day 
Now, I think this is a trade I took short. It's got lines through it. I'm not sure. But there's your trade short. Perfect trade. This is a very, very low risk trade. Triple quads. So I think I hopefully I've defined for you exactly what you need it's just to take a trade that starts at the 50, like right here. And you can see it's right on that one dot of green intermediate. That's all you need to launch the trade. I mean, sometimes you lose that intermediate. Just remember, this is three correlative markets. It never turns against you. It launches you off the trade. You don't have any confirmatory dots above you, but you don't need those. Those are not required. If you have them, it makes the trade less risky. But up you go. Now you're going to get pulled out on this wick. And again, the, the most advantageous thing might have been to close right at resistance here of, the, of that pivot. Now, you have no long trade here. And this is 1455. And we'll do one more day of just trend trades. Now, here's your signal. You can't take it. I, at least you can't take it from what I see right now. And then as we move down here, there's just no opportunity to get into this trade. Now here is where you're going to take a little bit of risk. You haven't technically broken the 50. You've got your oscillator signal. You've got your confirmatory faster NASDAQ Russell direction with you. You're sitting on the halfback, which, which, is that, which is very similar to the VWAP. So you're sitting on support. So this trade has some risk, but I would have taken this trade. Now, not every one of them have every single independent variable you want in your, in your favor. But the one thing we did not do is chase price. If we didn't get the entry, we never took a trade without the intermediate. We never took a trade without the three line. We never took a trade without the oscillator signal. And that confirmatory, whether if the X and the dot are obviously best, but we'll take the faster moving average. As the trade matures, we got the slower later. So that's a potential trade, and I would have taken the risk on that. That isn't a perfect trade. I think it's a good one, though. Now, you see you have no short here because the major and the minor quants are green. Now, if you had the three line, there's your perfect trade. And remember, the three-line recalibrates, and I, we just don't know how it was, but there's your trade. We're just looking at those trades. And I think I, think I might have shown this one. I don't know, but that's, I, I, I'm positive this would, have, this would have moved over and given us an entry. And up you go. So these trades off the 50, as you can see, are very, very conservative trades. And I think you can expect 80 to 90% of these trades to win. I, and I'll just go over one more time. You have to have the oscillator signal. You need that intermediate quant. The major and the minor can be yellow. If, they, if they're with you, it's just additional icing on the cake. They come right off the 50. The closer the candle body is to the 50, the better. But pushing this wick all the way through is great because the, that five tick candle body is sitting right on the 50. Great support here. And this trade just goes up and never shoots out a wick until you get your reversal. So that's trade number one.
Now, trade number two is your continuation trade. And I think the continuation trade must come with confirmatory dots and obviously must come with the three line and must come with the intermediate quant. In fact, every trade has to have the three line, this halo. Every trade has to have this intermediate line. But these are not going to have an oscillator signal. Your oscillator signal is here. You know you can't go long here because you've got these red dots, which means you're sitting on a NASDAQ and Russell that are heading down. Also, the E-mini with this pink background bias is also, it breaks out here, but it just finished a long multi-time frame downtrend. Your, your anticipation is it's just going to roll back to the downside. These dots sitting on top of the candles absolutely prohibit you from taking a counter trend trade. So you're looking for the roll to the downside. And I believe you get an entry here on either this moving to the left or this, or, or this candle right here. And this gives you your continuation. And I think on this trade, if you move everything over one to the left, one to the left, you've got your additional continuation and what you need, the continuation dots, the three line, mandatory intermediate. If you have the major and you have the minor, it's icing on the cake. This one's a little bit riskier because you're breaking through a major pivot. Now the pivot, it was a very long pivot. It was formed the previous session at 1500 hours. Well, it's not a trivial pit. It's not a trivial pit pivot. But I think with all of those things working for you, I think it makes the trade. Um, if I can find it. It's right here. I think it makes it tradable. So well, this isn't the trade because I because I lost I lost the pivot. Hold on a minute. Okay, now you have the same rollover again. You can't take the uptrend. Now and we're not looking at counter trend trades, but you can see you can't take them. Look what's sitting above you. This is why this Unirenko system is so powerful, because these dots. On other markets, NASDAQ, Russell, I mean, those longer term dots are down hard. You're not going to take a counter trend trade against the multi time frame direction of the NASDAQ and the Russell. You're going to wait for the E mini to roll over, which it's very likely to do. Now, you have the intermediate and you have the minor. I just don't know if you had the three line because it's not here and again this re does a reassessment at um when you open and close because it's a fractal indicator nothing repeats when you close ninja and open it this is yesterday's market so i closed it last night it changes the candle halo outline now here's the roll again but you have no three line now it's not even there's no hint of it here. So I would not think you have it. And it's, and it's just my best guess. It's not like it's here or it's not like it's here. It's not present on any of these candles. So I just don't think you got that three line to the downside and it prevented you from taking this role. Then you get a market that moves up. You can't take it. The shorter term time frame, NASDAQ Russell, turned green, but your longer term stays red. And then there's your short trade. And this, you do have both. And down you go again. So as long as you have the confirmatory dot 
and the three line and the intermediate and you're not trading into real major support and we actually took a trade into major support that role is going to work for you now this is this trade does not have the same win percentage as the initiation off the 50 but it's also a very very safe trade now if you look at the background bias on this trade it's pink and that pink background bias tells you that the multi time frame alignment of the e mini is to the downside so in order for this trade to fail what price would have to move in, in the opposite direction of the multi time frame alignment of the nasdaq russell and e mini that's very unlikely to happen unless the institutional guys come in and just start punching this market long but it's the institutional players that are creating this multi time frame trend down and they're the ones that are also creating this multi time frame trend down on the nasdaq and the russell so you're really trading in the direction of the institutional money the quant lines confirm it especially this middle one so these are very very safe trades now here you're on a green quant on this roll. Now you see these are this are these are very hard to assess because it's chop um, and you don't have the three line. And I can't tell if you would have. I'm not sure. Here I'm pretty sure you don't, because again, it's nowhere to be found here. Absolutely nowhere. And here is your short trade. Now I'm not trying to avoid showing you losers. Like if this if this was a a um, three line to the downside, or this was a three line to the downside, I would say you probably had a three line to the downside here. But remember, that's one thing that's very important is on most of these trades, and it's really a matter of discretion. You really want the confirmatory dots like you had them here you have them here you have them here you have them here you have them here so if you get a roll here where you don't have the confirmation you can always just step aside and leave that trade alone here you get your confirmatory dots, but you don't have the intermediate. So you just have to step aside. Here, you have your confirmatory dots and you have the intermediate. So down you go. I mean, see how much money you can make in this market? I mean, th this is this is a two or $3,000 day. And every trade is, is confirmed by the multi-time frame movement of multiple markets. That's why if you wanted to step aside on this entry, even though that it worked, it's irrelevant. If you if, if your risk assessment is, and it's up to you, listen, as long as you're able to assess risk on the entry, it's a valid entry for you. You either have to put in your playbook, I want the dots, I need my Russell and NASDAQ to be heading in the direction on a continuation trade, or you don't. As long, and as long as you do it every time, then you're trading it right. So if that's in your playbook, you trade it every time. If it's not, and you want the dots, you, you trade them every time. I would like them, but I think I would have taken that trade. Because, I mean, there's no absolute rule here that I can tell you. Now, right here, now that's a loser. We finally get one. This goes three ticks and it doesn't go any further. Now, eventually, we're going to get a loser and it's a very nice trade. Price comes back up. You're going to have everything here. And there's another gigantic winner with no counter trend trade because of those red dots. So let's move to another area and, and look at the, at the uh, continuation trade short. Now, here's a choppier market, and there's another signal that I wanted to show you. 
Now there's your entry. Now I don't think you have the three line because I don't see it anywhere here. And you have no, now this is really an initiation trade right off the 50. And this is a nice trade because you have an up candle and that's a bull move and a bull failure because the next candle just reverses in the direction of the intermediate. But I don't know if you have the three line. You don't have any confirmatory um, dots, but you don't need that on the initiation. But I just don't think you have an entry. But here's your up candle and here's your down candle for the continuation trade. And you can see you have your confirmatory dots, you have your intermediate quant, you have your minor, and there's nothing wrong with having it. It helps you, but you just don't need it. Now, I don't know if this was surrounded by the three line, if, if it showed the three line, but I wanted to show you one other indicator that we just made. This is an indicator that, that's an, a continuation indicator. It looks at multi, it, it, it does a triple time frame assessment of market structure and price action. Now, we revised it from our range chart to work on our, our Renko chart. And it really works great, only you're not going to see it very often. But when you see it, really, this, this should perk you up heavy duty for, the, for, the, for, a, um, for that continuation trade right here. Now, here's your continuation and a three tick move. Does not make it. Here's your continuation and the move down. Now, by this time, if you took all these trades, you should be out of the market. Um, I mean, you set a profit target. If you're trading three or four contracts here, you know, you're at seven or eight hundred dollars. If you keep pressing, ultimately, you're going to get a loser. And I'm not going to sit here and represent to anybody in the room that every trade is a winner. All we can do is minimize the potential risk we take on every trade. That's all. So that eight out of 10 trades are winners, sometimes even more than that. But never will we get every trade successful. So let's look, here's, let's look at your continuation trades to the upside. So the Nat, I mean, the NASDAQ, uh, the E-mini has been a real funky market. Now, we only have the dots on the E-mini. Uh, Sergio is, gonna, is in the process of building them for crude. So I'm only going to show you these trades on the E-mini because you need these confirmatory dots to take the continuation trades. And there's your great continuation trade right here. Now, I think you actually get this trade on the entry. I can't be sure of where the intermediate was here. But here, for sure, the intermediate's there. You've got both sets of confirmatory dots. Now, it's six, it's six o'clock in the morning, but there you go to the upside. Now, here you go. Here's another one. Here's your initiation. There's your retracement. And here's your continuation. And, I, and actually, I think you got this trade. Uh, looks like you have the intermediate. You certainly do have the three line. You have the confirmatory dot. You have the oscillator signal, and up and up you go. And you go now. You see, it pops a wick here to take us out of the trade as it approaches resistance. And this is that. And this is that half back or volume weighted average that or volume weighted average price. So. You would have taken it out close to here. You would have made more money. This is absolutely a profitable trade. Now here, I don't know if you had the three line or not. If you did, it would have won. This is a fourth tick and a winner. Uh, this is not really a continuation. I, I want to I show you real nice continuations. And they're always to the downside. So here's another one. Now you have no confirmatory dots. You can't take it to the downside. There's your confirmation 
to the downside and your continuation. And man, that just rocks. And this is a full winner. For us, that's a $350 winner. There's a form of a continuation and all the way down. Now, I can't see if you got any confirmatory dots here because I can't move this. Remember, though, you don't need them. You just like them. And I don't want, I don't want to make this more complicated because it's really very simple. But if on the first candle you don't have exactly what you want, you can take the second because you're only giving up two ticks. It's not like you've given up five on a range candle. You've only given up two here. So if everything clicks in just two ticks later, you can go for it. Remember, it adds risk, but it's still tradable. And what I'm just trying to do is give you a little bit of a flexibility because all the rules are still there. On the entry, you would like the confirmatory dots, but they're not absolutely necessary. What, I, I'm sorry, on the, on the continuation trade, they must be necessary. So if they're not here, you can wait one candle and take it down. Well, here's a beautiful trade, but you just don't have any opportunity. Now, there's another kind of continuation trade that's even that's a little bit riskier. Remember, we're looking for a reversal candle and then a continuation. But if we get a big wick like this, and you can see, I'll just put the arrow off to the side. Right here. And look where the big wick comes back to. It comes to that half back value weighted average price. So it's coming back to support. This is the close of the market yesterday, which is another area of support. The 50 is another area of support. You've got your dots that you're moving up into today's open. So you have to make a decision as, as to whether or not you think you're going to break the, break it. And that's totally discretionary. There's no right or no wrong here. But this is an entry, not on a reversal, but on a this is one tick away from closing to the downside. It still tells you that the bears tried to pull it all the way down. They failed. The bulls took back over again. And you could potentially take that trade up. That's a, just a little bit of market structure, and it can get you great trades. Now, I, I'll just show you on this move down here, and it's a beautiful entry. I would take that entry on triple quants off the oscillator signal, off of the confirmatory dot. Now, this is 2 o'clock in the morning. But let's say you decide there's too much risk. It's trading into that half back. You haven't broken it. You haven't broken the 50. It's not a perfect setup. And you decide you want to wait for the trade to mature and hope for a pullback or a big wick. And what you get is just this little wick right here. I would just pass this trade up, and it's just a trade that went a long way, but you just did not have a low risk entry. And that's all. Rather pass up a risky entry uh, than take a loser. So I'm, I'm just looking for a nice continuation trade. And here they are again. I mean, I just happen to be all to the downside because of the way the E-mini is rolling. Um, you can't take the short trade here at all. You have green dots, so there's no short trade. But the market moves down anyway. You get a, you get a retracement here. There's your continue, perfect continuation trade. Now you're going to have that intermediate quant on the continuation. And you're going to ride it all the way down, at least on our ATM, until you get the wick. This is not a big enough wick for me to re-enter the trade and take it lower because I'm already oversold. I'm not going to look for the market to go lower. 
here's another roll to the downside. Market comes down, rolls to the upside. You write off a resistance on our on that half back. There's the continuation short. You've got both lines, major and intermediate, and the minor. It's a triple quad. And actually, you're going to get taken out by this wick. There's nothing you can do about it. Every now and then, you're going to get wicked out of a trade. And this and and, uh, and as perfect as this trade is. I don't think it's going to make it there for you. Nope. It's going to go three ticks and not four. And then it's going to shoot this wick out and take you out. I'm not going to hide any losers from you. Gloss over them. Now, here's your continuation trade. I don't know if you have the intermediate. If you did, you have, you have the trade right here. Now, here's your great trade to the downside on the roll. Here, you do have everything. And you just make four. Here's one, three, four. And you just get your first target. Maybe you don't get filled, but it hits your first target, gives you the opportunity. Here, you see that intermediate quant sensors the trade. There's not even a hint of red here. No trade. Doesn't matter. I don't think you have the three line either. So I think you know what you need for the continuation. You must have confirmatory dots. You must have the intermediate. You must have the three line. And you're simply taking a roll back into the, into the trend. And there's no counter trend trade because on the oscillator signal, it's sitting above a red dot. And that prevents you from taking the market, the E-mini long against the direction of the NASDAQ and the Russell. That's your second kind of trade. So you have your initiation, and then you have your continuation trade. And the continuation trade, I think you really need to have a lot going for you. And you see on these three candles, here, here, and here. And I don't know how it was in real time, but I, I, but I suspect very few of them had the three line. Every one of these have wicks. And that's what we have to be real careful of. And unless we want a 13 tick stop, which is over, over three points, these wicks are gonna take us out of the trade. That's why we have to trade with such precision and wait for everything to align in our favor, including the three line, to optimize the chance that we're not gonna get a wick, uh, get blown out of the trade, and then the trade's gonna roll to the downside. So the third kind of trade is the toughest kind, and that's the counter trend trade. Now the thing about the counter trend trade is you don't have to take them. There's no reason that you need to put them in your playbook. If you don't want to, you're going to get tons of trend trades. You're going to get tons of trades that come right off the 50. A lot of continuation trades. And if you want to add the counter trend trades, it's really up to you. Now, the counter trend trades are tougher. Now, but what I found is this. Don't take the first signal here even though you're giving up two ticks take the second even if the oscillator was here take the next trade because the next trade forms a double bottom and i think on that second candle you actually have if this candle just simply rolls back to the downside, you have no entry. Enter on the second candle where you have a double bottom. Again, even if the oscillator is here. Now you can't take the trade if you have any red dots on a long trade 
or green dots on a short trade. Here you have no dots, but you're going to have the intermediate here. It's going to get pushed over. And it's going to be on this entry. And like I said, it's a riskier trade because you're taking it against the trend. But the thing that's changed is money flow. Money flow is now in your favor. And that's what you're leveraging. Now, when the confirmatory dots kick in, you know, you're, you're, you're you know, if, if, you're, if your heart rate's 120 a minute, it could drop to maybe 95 a minute because you've got a nice confirmation. When both sets of dots kick in, then, then you, you can feel like, you know, you've got some, you've got some room here. And it's going to move to here, and then it's going to take you out with the wick. So let's look at let's look at a a bunch of counter trends. Now here, there's no counter trend. You need to have that intermediate red. Here, there's no counter trend here. And here, you've got these green dots. Here, this works, but you can't take the trade because you have the green dot. Can't take this counter trend. Can't take this counter trend because of the dots. There's your counter trend. Dots have ended. The intermediate quants kicked in. Right here. Oscillator signal. And you're not taking the first reversal. You're taking the oscillator entry. You can't take the first reversal, so you don't have to wait that candle. As soon as you get what you like, you can take this trade. Now, optimally, you like the oscillator on the first signal, and you'll notice even the second one blew you out with a wick. And what you'd have to do is go back in and then take the trade up. This is why, but the thing is, both of these trade, both of these entries matured without that intermediate. Once the intermediate kicks in and you've got some money flow going into this market, then you avoid all the wicks and up it goes. Now, here's a counter trend you cannot take. You've got these green dots, and you have no counter trend trade. You're not going to take a trade this far down. Now, there's no three line anywhere here, so I'm just going to – this is a winner, but I'm just going to ignore it. It's going to go four ticks, but I don't know if we would have gotten that trade. And there's no counter trend trade here. There's no no green on the intermediate. You see how that intermediate quant saves you? Now here, there may have been, because you're sandwiched right in between the small area of yellow, but you would have needed the three line, but you can't take the trade because you've got the red dots. So let's look for one where you actually have what you need. Now, you can't take this. You've got the red dots. Now, here is your, is your counter trend trade. There's your oscillator. You're taking it on triple quants. And it doesn't make it for you. It goes three and then shoots out a big wick but it's a good trade. And I, and I want you to know the counter trends are the toughest trades. Now there's no continuation counter trend. You gotta take the trade off the bottom. There's only a continuation short trade, not a continuation counter trend, whether that worked or it didn't work. It doesn't matter. Now there's your counter trend. You can take the trade, you can't take the trade here or here or here. You take it right here, confirmatory dot, you're going to go to here, 
then it's going to take you out with the wick, but you've got yourself an, a pretty decent winner. Now, the counter trend trades right close to the 50 into all this support. You're just not taking them. Now, this is not a counter trend trade I would take. It's really tight to the 50. I want this trade to lift off like right here. You can't take this trade because of the dot. Look at the oscillator signal. Takes you out. And that's, this, this is why they're risky. And this is why you don't have to put them in your playbook. Let's look for another uh, counter trend. There's a big move up. Now, there's a valid counter trend right there. You don't have the oscillator, but you don't absolutely need it. That's a very, very big trade. There's no wick until you get here. And that's a full winner. That's a $350 trade. Now we're going to get a counter trend. Now, it's just not tradable. Those red dots are above it the whole time. You can't take that counter trend sitting on those red dots. And this one works. There it is, right here. And that's a really nice trade. You get wicked out here. So those are the trades. So you really have three trades. Uh, and this is your safest trade, is one. Is the trade off the 50 SMA. Now, if the candle body is close to the 50, it's, it's really excellent. Hold on one second here. And what I'm trying to do is give you an idea of risk assessment. Now, we still easily made over a thousand bucks this week, and I had one rugged day. Um, and, and there's no reason why we can't make two grand. I'm just trying to find a certain key here, and I can't. Oh, here it is. We're going to make that, you know, that's like really good. But, but you want the wick at least to traverse the 50 for sure. And then... Confirmatory dots, again, icing. Absolutely necessary? No. The only time you need confirmatory dots are on the continuation trade. But if you have them, great. Now, off the 50, oscillator signal. A must. Three line, a must. Intermediate quant is a must on every trade, just like the three line is. And just want to make sure I've got everything. And then just um, be careful with support and resistance. Now, if you take the same set of criteria and you use them as a continuation trade, Obviously, this is not applicable. Confirmatory dots become a must. Oscillator signal is not applicable. 
Three line is a must. Intermediate quant are must. And be careful with support and resistance. And the additional thing is for seven is you want to keep the trade six points. No more than six points off the 50. Now, we'll have an indicator for that soon, but it's pretty easy to estimate for now. And that's your continuation trade. Now, your counter trend trade. Okay. Not applicable. Confirmatory dots would be nice, but you're hardly ever going to get them. Are going to be rare. But you can, but you cannot have dots against the trade. And you have no trade. The oscillator signal, yes, you need. Three lines a must. Intermediate quant is a must. Be careful with support and resistance. And here, optimally, more than six points off the 50. So you want to you what you want to do is you want to take a take a reversal on an oversold market down or vice versa. So let me find a place where I can put it where you can actually read it. And then I'll see if there are any questions. And let me tell you, the rules are very easy and the workspace is extremely intuitive because almost everything is projected onto the candles. I found some blank space right here. So just again, on a trend trade, off the 50, candle body as close to the 50 as possible. All you need is a wick through the 50, but if you have that candle body sitting close to the 50, better. Confirmatory dots, great, but not a must. Oscillator signal a must, three line a must, intermediate a must. Always be careful with support and resistance. The continuation. Okay, how did I get that? What happened here? Hold on a minute. <laughs> okay, I, I, you know what? I didn't change these, but this is a continuation trade. And I'm just going to take this off and, 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 and label this continuation trade confirmatory dots a must you're not going to get the oscillator signal the three line is a must intermediate quant is a must be careful with support and resistance and remember don't be oversold no more than six points off the 50 on the continuation trade. Let me let me just get rid of that one thing on this one too. These are the counter trend trades. Confirmatory dots rare. 
but you cannot have the dots against the trade. Oscillator signals a must. Three lines a must. Intermediate is a is a must. Be careful trading up into support or down into resistance. And optimally, you want to be oversold or overbought, although it's not absolutely necessary. And these are the rules. Now, they can all be bent a little bit. But if you, the more that you bend them, the more you accumulate risk. If you take a continuation trade here without these confirmatory dots, the trade's much riskier. You can't trade without the three line. You can't trade without the intermediate. That's on every single trade we take. We want the confirmatory dots. If you don't take them and you still take the roll, you're just trading, a, it's just a riskier trade. If you take a trade, and I think I showed one, this is a perfect trade long with confirmatory dots off the 50. You don't have the confirmatory dots, you don't absolutely need them, but it's a slightly riskier trade. And remember, if you don't have an entry right off the 50, don't chase the trade unless you get a very, very big wick or a reversal candle. That's the most important thing. And the, that's the biggest mistake uh, I made on Thursday when, when, when I had uh, my, my, my rugged day that prevented us from having a 22,000 or 2,500 hour week was I chased some trades. And I'm not gonna get into more, into, into any more detail about being careful with our half back and chop. That takes screen time. These basic rules are gonna get you where you wanna be. Just stick to them. And let me see if there are any questions, because I think this defines the system and it's just not hard to trade. And I just want to say a couple of things about Unirenko, because uh, I only want to go another, another 15 minutes. Um, and then we'll take a look at the right edge of the E-mini and see what's going on with the market. Unirenko or Renko or any Renko variation is always great in a trend trade. The, the, the really difficult period of time is when you trade Unirenko and chop. And Unirenko, Renko, Wicked Renko, you know, I don't, you know, um, uh, Pray to the Stars Renko and chop are really going to give you a hard time unless you have very, very powerful indicators to allow you to sidestep the chop. And because our system analyzes data from multiple markets on multiple time frames, it's going to it's going to allow you to avoid chop an enormous amount of times. Now you saw that there were good trades that we simply couldn't take because they didn't comply with our entry rules. And when you trade with specificity. Your goal is not to get winners, it's to avoid losers. And so sometimes we're gonna have to sidestep a winner. The, our attitude should be, I don't care about that winner. It went 145 ticks. It didn't give me a long wick to get in on a continuation trade. I didn't get a reversal candle for a continuation trade. It went straight up. The initiation of the trade didn't give me an entry. I didn't have the three line. I didn't have the intermediate. So what? If you stay with the rules, the next four losers in a row, you're going to be able to avoid. That's the goal of the software is to give you a risk assessment on every trade. And you can see how well it, it, um, it censors lots of counter trend trades that you could potentially take with these dots. Here's an up candle. You can't take it. You can't take it. You can't take it. You look for the roll, you get a winner. Here's an up candle. Is it a potential counter trend? If you have the three line, look at the dot. You can't take it. Here is our, honestly, this is a great, this is a great indicator. Here's our continuation signal here. This um, 
<laughs> blocking on what it is. It's not a square. Uh, don't worry about it. I think you can see it. My brain's so squishy from the week. There's your gray trade to the downside. Now you have the intermediate. I don't know if you have the three line in real time, but the long trade or the counter trend is censored. And all you can do is take a trend trade, counter trend censored, counter trend censored. Here's loser, loser, three losers in a row. And you have winner, winner. That's actually a loser and a winner. And like I said, and there's another winner. There's the counter trend trade that you can take. And this, le this counter trend has legs, no dots. You have your confirmatory X all the way up there. You have your intermediate and your major. You have your oscillator signal. This pivot hasn't formed yet. So in real time, there's no pivot here. I like the fact that it occurred on the third candle. It gives me this candle to form a double bottom. Gives me a less opportunity to fire a wick, although wick's always possible. But this comes right up and gives us a nice winner. And it might even be it might even be a full winner. I'll scale it. Oh, scaling tool. Something's something's wrong with it. I got to get our mechanic Sergio to figure out what's wrong. You're going to go all the way to here if you if you if you take the trade through the fifty, and it's going to give you three point seven five. That's not going to be a full winner. It's off by one tick. You need four points for a full winner. And then it's going to come back and take you out. But you get a very, very nice trade. As long as you wait for the rules, censored counter trend, censored counter trend, censored counter trend, off you go. Perfect trade. So if you just stick with the rules, you're really, really going to get, I think you can get 80% winners and, uh, and 20% of your trades about are going to be losers. And if you can trade with that kind of win, win percentage, you're going to make an, a, a, a ton of money. Because you're going to be, um, you're going to be sidestepping one heck of a lot of losers. And everybody else trading Ranko and Uniranko that only analyze one market and one time frame. Are going to get are going to get broiled. So let's. I'm just going to move this to the right edge and let's see how the market's doing. I'm going to drag it. Let's see where it is now, and then I'll answer any questions that you have. And I, I think also what hurt me this week is I, I was too conservative. I mean, twice I stopped with five hundred dollars of profit. And twice I stopped with 400 and change. And we went on to get multiple additional winners. But I'm just so worried that I'll give back the money when I hit our profit target. I stop. You know, it's going to take me forever to bring it over. Let's just, let me, let's, let me just remember where it is here. But I think you can see it right here. And you're going to have it on video. So you can always refer back to it. So let me just look at the day. And then I want to go through the questions. So it's on 424 at 1546. So here's the market right here. Now, this is a live market. You have no trade here, a no entry. And you're entering right into this strong area of resistance. And I would have held off on this trade. Now, once it breaks it, you got to ask yourself whether you want to chase the trade and chase it up. I wouldn't have chased it up. The trade I would have taken would have been this trade right here. Short. I've got my confirmatory dots. I've got my intermediate. And I've got my major. And I've got my nice short trade. And the background bias is pink and I'm taking it short. There's no long trade. See how this long trade is censored? You've got the dots. You can't take it. This long trade does not have the intermediate quant. 
You can't take it. This trade, there's no entry here. This trade right here, there's your entry and up. Now, you do get taken out by a wick, but not after a winner. Here's your oscillator signal, confirmation. You don't absolutely need it. You've got triple quants here, and down you go. These are, these are all just now. Right here, you're up. Right here, these are all trades I would take. This is a perfect long. Here's a perfect continuation trade. No, no counter trend because I don't have, you know, this little gap here. Now, you know, there's your continuation short. Perfect trade. No wick all the way to the bottom. Perfect trade all the way to the bottom. I mean, I mean, we're right. We do it. We're, we're working off the right edge. Now, right now, we've got terrible volume. But what we do, what we have now is we have an entry. And we can see how it goes. But you always hope that by the time you get here, you're finished. You're trading 609. This is the number of contracts crossing per minute. It's very, very low. So you don't want to trade in low volume. But what we can watch the trade. And we'll watch it as we... Um, as I answer some questions, and we'll see if it evolves on totally awful volume. Remember, it's also Friday, so it doesn't look like it's, you know, who knows? Just don't know. Okay, let me, let me look at the questions. I hope I've clarified a lot for everybody. And uh, I hope I've put into place the value of all of, of, all of these uh, signals. And so just to say, this is yesterday's close, and this is today's open. Now you can see the market is trying to make it, but who the heck knows if it's going to go up. It's kind of like uh, it's got a hernia right now because it's got so few people trading it. And just like they say, the short trades evolve a lot faster than the long ones. When the market collapses, it does so rapidly. When the market moves up, it, 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 it moves rapidly, less commonly. So we'll see. Okay, let me go to the questions. Okay. Okay, there are a lot of them, so you'll have to bear with me because I'm gonna I want to answer all of them. Roger, the gold dash line, this is equivalent up to the value weighted average price. It's that point where based on volume, uh, the power of the bulls equals the power of the bears. That's what this is. It's a strong area of support and resistance. It's called the halfback. And the reason it's called the halfback is because it's, it's right at that point where you've got a clash. And the clash is between the bulls and the bears. So if you start stuttering along this line, stand aside. Because it means the power of the bulls or the bears is equal. And it may take a while before the market breaks out. Um, but trading off of it, though, is usually very advantageous to the downside. Using it as support to the upside is nice. That's why this trade here was risky. You had to break this line. Remember, we always mine support and resistance. This trade doesn't break it. This candle, we need a two-thirds candle break. It doesn't occur till here. So now you have to make a decision as to whether or not you want to chase the trade. And I don't ever recommend chasing a trade from what I've seen. There's no guarantee you're going to get a continuation trade. If you don't get the entry, you've got to wait for a, a pullback. And that's a big wick or a down candle with a continued dot confirmation. 
and then a move back up. Listen, uh, Keith, if you don't have all the signals, don't worry. Sergio right now is making a brand new package. He told me he cannot make, he can't finish it today. It'll go out on Monday. I, I apologize for that. But you're going to get a package on Monday and it will have every single signal that you see. It's going to have the new um, halfback volume weighted average price. It's going to have the previous market close at our current open. So it's going to have that last indicator that I just fiddled with yesterday. And actually, one of our, um, one of our traders sent it to me. And when, when somebody does, I always acknowledge it. I, we were going to make one anyway. I want, because a lot of traders asked me to see the previous close and the present open. He just gave us a real nice volume metric as well to throw in. And when you see the indicator, you're going to see it's got lots of FIB levels and all this stuff. And I took those all out because I, I, I don't want to trade Fibonacci retracements. I don't believe in those. So those are all gone. Sure, the Ronald, the three line is not here anymore. Remember, if you remember from the webinar, I'll show you the three line indicator. It's in here, right here. Here's the three line, right here. And if you look here, it colors the candle on a down gold, on an up color royal blue. But if you look at the plots, they're all transparent because I don't have to look at the color of the three line. All I need to do is see what it's doing and when it aligns. And you can tell that by simply looking at the candle outline. So if you look right here, if you, if you look here, it's, there's actually another indicator here and I'll show, I'll show you that it's there. If I write here on this three line, Here's the three line V2. Now, I don't know why it's not, it's not projecting and, and saying uh, right, line, right line V2. Um, it should, but the three line is right there. So let me move this up a little bit. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not, but it's there. I just took it out. And if I took out that transparent, you'd see three more lines here and you'd have six. That's why the three line is not there. It's there, but it's there, but it's not there. All you have to do is worry about the candle color. Yes, Gordon, that's a really good question. On the E-mini, I'd like to see at least 1,500 contracts a minute. Look at the E-mini, it's pushing up. I mean, this is way too small. On crude, I'd like to see 500 a minute. And the same thing with gold. Gold, four to 500 a minute is good. E-mini, 1,500 to 2,000 is good. When you start seeing 300 crossing a minute like this, you know that you're in a dead, a dead market and you should never trade. I mean, there's never going to be a confirmed great signal because you have so, so few traders um, trading and they're just playing. There's no institutional participation anymore. And with just the small trader here, they're just banging around a few contracts and nothing is, is going to be effective because everything is just an, an assessment of market sentiment. And right now there is no market sentiment except for 25 small commercial traders dropping in five contracts and four contracts. Now, I'd still, if I traded, I'm going to go long, but I, I wouldn't have any, I wouldn't have much conviction on a trade with so little volume. That's why we have so many volume metrics here, because I think volume is so important. Roger, we haven't put it in yet. 
that's gonna, the volume weighted average price, our halfback line, this gold line, is going to be in the package that goes out on Monday. And once you get that Monday package, you should have every indicator that I do. Every single indicator. Now, I just want to say just really quick, because a lot of people are asking me this question. I see it. Now, if you don't have the system, the system's $11.99. And that includes all upgrades and add-ons for life. So all we've done is made new, more indicators. I think we're done. And if you have any of the software already, it's $5.99 to the, for the upgrade. Now, this is the last opportunity you'll have to get this price. And I... I I tell you, I am not a salesman, but I am not kidding. This system is a killer system. And uh, I, can, I honestly don't know when I've ever seen that's better. And 1100 had change. If you bought the system on Sunday and you traded today and took all of my trades, you paid, you paid, for, you paid for the system in one week. So the upgrade, if you have the three line, or, or some of our software of, of just $600. Um, is, I mean, we're not gonna offer it at that price again. So I just wanna let you know if you're interested because I see that question happening over and over again. And, and, and I just wanna, I'll just put that up. And so Roger, you'll get the full package. Sure, Marlene. I, I, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more of a detailed explanation because I, normally I don't. But just so you get with crystal clarity, you understand what these are doing are. They're, they're, tracking, they're tracking money flow. And there's no way to directly, to d directly track the direction of institutional money. Now, maybe order flow, which is the lower line on the three line, is one way. But this is a better way. What, in the course of a given day, what the institutional traders do is simply rotate their money from asset class to asset class. So when the risk is on, they trade stocks. And that's why there's a tremendous correlation between the NASDAQ, Russell, Dow, and E-mini, because they're putting them into all stocks. When the risk is off and they want to move into more safe uh, investment uh, niches, where do they move their money? They move their money, I can tell you a few, they move their money into T-bonds, they move their money into, into, into T-notes, they move their money into, into certain precious metals, and they move their money into certain currencies. And you could be shocked at some of the correlations between precious metals and, and currencies. So what we do with these nine lines is we look at all these correlative markets. So when the institutional traders move their money out of stocks and into bonds, notes, precious metals, and currencies, that's what's in these nine lines. We also have some, ETF, some ETFs. Um, some of the lines are a little bit difficult, but we, we, we can format them for you. So what we're doing is we're just tracking how institutional traders are moving their money around. And when there's a big move like this, where's that money going that's coming out of the E-mini? Well, we know where it's going. It's going into bonds, notes, certain precious metals and currencies. It's not going to cash. And that's what we're tracking. We're tracking the flow of that institutional money. And it's a really good correlate. The intermediate or middle line, the markets in there have evolved over time to become the ones that just correlate incredibly precisely with the direction of the market. And if you look, they call this move 
Remember, they're not looking at price on this chart. They're not even looking at the E-mini. But this is green before this candle even begins to rise. And this candle fall is red before this even begins to fall. That middle line is a killer line. And you got to trade in its direction. Here, it's red before the market begins to fall. Now, you talk about a leading indicator. This, this is it. Now, now, this has not been recalibrated or changed because I haven't closed the system. This turns red before the candle begins to fall. So it's really telling you the direction that, that, that the price on your trading chart is going to go with a real high degree of uh, probability. And that's what we mean when we talk about the quant lines and, and uh, money flow. It took us forever to get them. Now we have quants for a lot of markets. On crude, I'll just I'll show you quickly. We only have we have three quants. But I'll tell you on crude, it's different. Um, on the e-mini, these are nine markets. These are three markets at three different speeds. So all we could do is get three correlative markets. This is very fast, intermediately fast, and that's slow. So there's your, there's your perfect long trade right there. Again, intermediate is the most important. And that gives you a perfect long trade on crude. Now, you're going to miss a lot of trades on crude because crude is choppy and institutional money buffets it around. But when you get a signal with the quants, the probability of a win is very high. Now, here's your counter trend trade. Well, actually, you don't have a counter trend. I'm sorry. Here's your continuation trade. That's a gimme counter uh, continuation with our with our continue I, I, I hope I'm not saying counter continuation there's our continuation trade with our continuation signal and the intermediate and the and the minor and that intermediate again is the most important of the three here you have no trade and you're not and you're not going to get every winner but with, with crude, your real goal is to avoid the losers. Now, here's a winner. Here's a winner. I don't know if you have the three line in real time. You can't obviously cannot take that trade. Can't take that trade. It's going to be a lot of trades in crude that don't, but here's your winner. Here's your continuation trade. It's risky. There's the continuation signal. It's up into resistance. But if you took it, you got yourself a winner. So the key is there's going to be a lot of moves on crude you can't get. But when you get a move and you take it with the quants, you're very, very likely to get a winner. And that's the goal. And look at that trade. I mean, it did push a little wick, but, you know, on, on absolutely miserable volume, it's pushing up. Now, none of us should be in this trade, but it shows the power of, of, the, of, the, of the quants. Um, I mean, you're never going to get caught in the wrong direction. That's the key. If you take a counter trend trade, you want that to be the direction of money flow. If you're taking a trend trade, you want that to be in the direction of money flow. You never want to get caught trading in the opposite direction. Then you won't. I think I might have done that, Marlene. I'll do it really briefly again. These dots that we haven't built the crude ones yet, but we're what we're going to. If you have the system, you'll you'll get all that. Like I said, you always get the upgrades and the add-ons. This, these dots are looking at the Russell and the NASDAQ, two other markets, and they're looking at two time frames, the two longer time frames. They're just looking at two different moving averages. This is a fast moving average. This is a slower moving average. 
So it's telling you, well, what's the direction? I want it straight in the direction of the NASDAQ and the Russell if I take an E-mini trade. So they're just telling you the direction that NASDAQ and Russell are going. Now look at this counter trend trade right here. There's the oscillator signal. Now counter trend trades are hard. But this is, this is a viable trade because you've got your money flow telling you that money's coming out of the market. And the NASDAQ and Russell, at least the fast moving average, is telling you you're trading in their direction. So you're going to get yourself a modest winner. No, 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 no major but you're gonna get yourself a point and a quarter. Our first target's one point, everyone's gonna be out at a point and a quarter. So you, you got taken out in this wick. And I'll take a point and a quarter any day if I can take enough of them. No, Ronald, the three line you don't see, they're projecting data onto the candle halo. They're invisible. If, if we projected them, you'd have six lines here, three for the three line and three for the quants. So in order to make it simple, we simply took the data from the three line and project it onto the candle. When the candle halo is blue, the three line is aligned to the upside and you don't need to see it. When the candle is yellow, the three lines align to the downside and you don't need to see it. So we made it invisible, took the burden of you having to track it with your crosshair, and just all you have to do is look at the candle outline, and that's going to tell you whether you got it or not. You had it on this entry right here with the intermediate, and you had the confirmatory dot. And if you had a little more volume, it would have clunked up a lot faster. Now, it did, stop, it did take you out on a wick. Well, that's not working. But it still gave it's it's still, I would have given you a winner if you had any kind of volume. I mean, you're trading in the right direction, in the direction of the three line projection, blue candle halo, and that intermediate. You, the, the pivots are in the new indi are are in it. It's going on Ninja Eight with, within about ten days. Okay, you know, Ted brings up this. I showed a lot of counter trend trades that you could not enter. Um, how about taking them with, with a scalping mentality? Um, exit as soon as price goes against you by two or three ticks. You know, likely a large number of small winners, and he's right. And you know, Ted, there's nothing wrong with that strategy. I, I'll tell you that right now. I mean, by nature, I'm not a scalper. Um, but I'll tell you, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I, I truly don't. Um, I'm just looking, you know, for a few, a few trades that I think have the possibility of, of really getting me a big runner. Um, but there's nothing wrong with your strategy. I just want you to, I just want you to know that, you know, it's got rules, you know, exactly what you're looking for. Uh, you've covered your uh, losses. I mean, you know, you, you, you've mitigated your risk. You know exactly what you're looking for. And there's nothing wrong with taking that, with taking that strategy. I have to tell you that, Ted. Grant, I can't show it on 4. Wait, maybe I, you know, to, to show it on 4X, I'd have to, it would take me 10 minutes. Because I would have to drop this, close Ninja Trade. I have to close these charts and open it up on my FXCM data feed. If you wanna see it on Forex, I'll be happy to show it to you personally. Um, I just can't do it. I'm telling you, the Forex gives you awesome signals. We have a ton of people trading the Forex. The Forex, the Forex entry, a Forex Unirenko is 10,420, and it gives you really, really nice Forex signals. And if I didn't have to take out my CQG data feed, close my whole workspace, 
put up in my FXCM data feed and bring up a new workspace, I'd show it to you. I have, I have 12 Forex pairs and they trade really great. And we have a scanner on, on the Forex that alerts you to when a good trade is coming so that you can actually fold up all 12 Forex pairs and, uh, and just wait for an alert. And these are our Forex quant lines, which took us forever to make. Um, here's our FX. We have the Aussie dollar, the Euro pound, Euro yen, Euro, Euro dollar, uh, pound dollar, pound Canadian, pound yen, pound, uh, I think that's the pound Kiwi or the pound New Zealand, pound dollar, dollar Canadian, dollar yen. If you're, if you're trading a, a, a Forex pair you really love and we don't have a quant, we'll build it for, we'll, we'll build it for you. Dan, you can't use these on the YM. Within the next week, we're going to build our YM dots because these dots are looking at the NASDAQ and the Russell, and those are not the best dots to use on the YM. In addition, the YM requires a longer Renko. It needs a 10420. So the 10420 input on the YM and the NASDAQ required that the dot speed and the, uh, of the correlative markets we use be changed. But that's Sergio's job next week. We want to build the crude dots, the YM dots, and the NASDAQ dots. And if you have the software, you're going to get all those dots. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're coming. I want them because I'll, because I think they're going to be so good on the YM, we may make the YM a tra tradable instead of crude. Now, a lot of people love crude, uh, but we'll see. If the YM trades as well as I think it will, uh, we might use the YM. And here's the, I, I can show you quickly. This is just a small chart. It doesn't have everything on it, but I'll show you the YM real quickly. It doesn't really have anything on it. But I, I like the YM. It's only $5 a tick. Wow, well, here's the problem. It's the wrong month. I'm sorry. Now, here's the YM. Well, let's move toward, you know, if we move closer. Now, now the pivot indicator is set at, at too sensitive. The pivot indicator has to be set to 150. The higher the number, the less sensitive the indicator. And we don't want all these little, these small swing pivots. You know, there's your continuation. There's your start. Again, you're going to get a million good trades here. Winner. Winner, no trade here. Now that's a continuation in a winner. That's a continuation in a winner. And look at that trade, right off the 50 with an oscillator signal in the three line. Now we don't have the quants, we don't have the dots. This is the bare bone system, but you can see uh, that's, good, that's gonna be a winner. There's your continuation trade. There's your continuation trade. There's your continuation trade. Now that could have been your counter trend. I don't know. There's your continue. This is a brand new trade to the downside. No trade here. You don't have the three line. Now you have the three line here and that's a loser. There's your three line. That's a first target. There's your continuation first target. You don't have the three line. Um, that's not going to make it. Now, we don't have the quants. There's your continuation for a big winner. There's a potential big winner. There's another potential big winner. There's another winner. I mean, we, we can't censor any of these trades. So I don't know. But you can see we have a lot of potentially great trades. That's another one. No trade here on a, on a, on a blue three line. And I'm not running through these. I'm not, I'm not. I'm telling you, when we get a loser, I'm, I'm going to tell you. But remember, on four contracts, you're only risking $200, and the upside on a runner is huge. So our risk to reward on the YM is very good. 
I really like the YM. No biz, you can use it on any market. Um, you can use it on the NQ, the DAX, the YM. We trade crude. The, the, the Right now, the ES is the only full market because it's the only one with the dots. But by the end of next week, we're going to have dots on the crude. We're going to have dots on the NASDAQ and dots on the YM. And then the following week, we're going to have dots on, uh, we're going to work on the DAX. So as next week matures, you're going to have more and more markets. Now you, you can trade them without the dots. Everything else is in place. But I just recommend that the dots help you so much that you, you want to stick with the markets where we have them. Although I trade crude without them, I think um, this, is, this is your best bet. And, and I want to be honest with you. I want to tell you what we have now and what we'll have next week. I mean, we already know exactly what kind of dots we want to make. It's just that we're just waiting for Sergio to code them. And he just coded this indicator with the VWAP uh, session, yesterday's session close and today's session open. So he's running at, 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 at mega speed on it. It, you, because the way it does is, I mean, I'll show you a choppy market. Um, let's find something with a lot of chop in it. And I know exactly the place I can show it to you. Like right here. Now, here's a long signal. On, but the oscillator, is this candle is is surrounded in yellow, there's no long. Here's a short trade, there's no intermediate trade, there's no intermediate. He, all of these long have red dots. You have no long trade here. Their short signal has no three line. So every single trade in this area here is censored because you have no entry. Short here, no intermediate, no trade. Remember, you must have the three line and the intermediate. Those are absolute criteria for an entry. On a counter trend long here, you have to have the three line and the intermediate green. It's not, it's yellow. And you have the red dots above you. There is no long trade. On this short trade here, the three lines against you. Now here on this counter trend, you actually have a risky entry because the intermediate is turned, but you have the major and the minor against you. So it's good you didn't take it because you're going to get wicked right out of the trade. And you can't take the trade because you have these red dots above you. So the only thing that you can do is wait for a pullback. It could be this wick, only I'd like a bigger wick than that. But if you really want to take the risk, there's your entry. But you have no intermediate here either. So this whole formation here is untradeable. And this is a very, very whippy market here. I mean, it's down, up, down, up. And you just can't trade it. So who cares? Wait till the market's trending. You'd love to get this move up. You just can't do it but it prevents you from taking losers and chop. And that's what kills Renko, Uniranko, modified Renko traders, is when they get caught up in chop and they get beaten up. Now, right here is your short trade, but you've got a green dot. You can't go short. Here is your first long trade that hits all the rules. There's your intermediate. The minor you'll take. There's the oscillator. There's the three line. And look what you get. You got yourself a gigantic trade. With no wick, you're in this trade all the way to the top.
you get eight and a quarter points. So you just sidestep all this junk. Nothing, nothing low risk, no entries allowed by our rules. And those are, these are absolute unbreakable rules that are not subject to discretion. No three line in your favor, taking a short against the dots, you cannot do. Wait for this trade and you get eight and a quarter points. That's how you avoid chop. Comes back against you, can't take the short trade, take the continuation trade, and you have another trade to the upside. And here's where you make an unbelievable amount of money. Whoops. Just let it go. That's two and a half. And then it goes up again on a valid continuation trade right here. Now, I think it's actually right here. But again, it's a little bit different. But again, you've got a gigantic move. That's how it works. I mean, that's how you avoid. Okay, Dr. Keith does his own thing, Roger. Right now, he's open on one trade, light, sweet, crude. That's the only trade he's open on. And, and he's open on one uh, spread, and that's the uh, USO spread. You know, if you want to trade options, that's his spread to go along with what he says is going to be a month long rise in crude. Remember, the X is just the shorter term time frame analysis of the Russell and the NASDAQ direction. The dots are the longer term other slower moving average analysis of the Russell and NASDAQ. But what they do is they tell you the multi time frame alignment of these markets. And believe me, you don't want to take a short trade on the E mini when the NASDAQ and the Russell have a multi time frame trend to the upside. You want to trade in their direction. And this is what these dots keep you in. They keep you in the same direction. And remember, institutional money is what's pushing up those other two markets on a multi-time frame basis. And this is why we don't get burnt often in CHOP. Once in a while, we take losers. There's no down candle here on a green dot. No down candle here on a green dot. There's no red intermediate quant. So the analysis just doesn't allow you to, to fade the market here. Eventually, when you can, you just don't have an optimum entry. So you just made two gigantic long trades. I mean, this is a this is a thousand dollar move on four contracts. So you can't take the counter trend. And this is your trade right here. Now it's censored by that green dot. No big deal. No short trade, can't take it. Um, this long trade, can't take it. But you can, if you move one candle over, remember I saw on the counter trend, taking the next candle because it forms this double bottom. You've got the dots right above you. And there's, look at your counter trend trade. It's, you know, it's killer. So if you just listen, if you just stick with the rules and not mind having a, the trade move two or three points without you being in it, it'll move five points with you being in it and you'll, stay, and you'll sidestep all the chop. That's the hard part. The, Renko gets you into trend trades, but what they do is they tend to murder you in chop, but not the system. Six points, Bob, not ticks. You, uh, I consider the ES overbought if we've got more than six points between our entry and the 50. Yes, Grant, you can use it with the Forex. I just, I, honestly, I don't have time to put up, I'm telling you, the signals you get are exactly like you're looking at here. If I covered this up and told you it was the uh, Euro dollar 
or the, uh, you would not know the difference. It moves exactly the same. Alan, the 50 simply acts as an area of support and resistance, just like our modified VWAP. When you trade into it, you just have to be very careful when you do. And here's the thing that, that often happens that I see. Like if you take this trade, you have space. But when you start getting to the 50, if you start pushing through it, oftentimes you'll get a wick and it'll take you out. So to close the trade right at the 50 is a conservative thing to do. And I think it's an appropriate thing to do. Now, this would have gotten you all the way to here before it gave you a wick. So you left some money on the table. But by taking the trade out at the top of its candle, you also saved yourself a lot of potential money on the eight tick trailer. So, and then once you break it, you look for a retest and the continuation long. And the same thing happens on a short. You break it to the short side. Hopefully you can take it down. You look for a retest up and then the movement back down. It's just that simple. And that's the same thing that we do off of the um, modified VWAP. You see right here on the short, you can't take it because the major is red, a uh, green, and you've got that green dot, but you're trading below the, um, the, uh, the VWAP and you've got a green dot. So you can't get that winner. So who cares? You can't, you can't take that counter trend. It doesn't matter. You're going to get that trade long and you got yourself a beautiful long trade. Actually, the trade is right here. And kaboom. Yeah, the rectangles, Ted, are the pullback, are, are the continuation signals. We just made them. This tells you, and, th and this is a, a, a multi-time frame assessment of price action and market structure that tells you on this down candle, on the next up candle, you're loaded to continue to the upside. Now, this is a tough trade up into, into major resistance. I don't know if I would have taken it. But based on price action and market structure on the higher time frames, you're set up for this continuation. And you don't see it often, but when you do, now there was one there that that was a loser. Here's your continuation right here. So watch for that signal. It occurs intracandle, and it's really an, an amazing um, continuation signal. Do I scale out biz? Uh, I'm, I'm very conservative. You know, the average size of a loser, because I trade for a contract, about $300. The average size of a winner is about 250, 200 to 250. So you're gonna have to get one and a quarter winners to knock out a loser. But we trade 10 winners. Out of every 10 trades, we get eight winners and two losers. So if you scale that, your profit is your profit loss is going to be huge. Now I had a rugged day on Thursday, which I caused myself, and I lost seven hundred fifty bucks. But I made two thousand dollars in the other four days. So we closed the week. And I'm going to want to be honest with you. I'm not going to hide anything. So we made about three hundred thirteen hundred fifty dollars for the week. Commissions more than covered to make over a grand for one week. And if I just didn't have trouble on Thursday, and I could have, I, my first trade was a winner. I made two, I made two twelve fifty. The second trade I took was a horrible trade. And then I got caught up and I, and I just traded really poorly. And I lost my discipline and I traded all the way to 3.30 in the afternoon to try to make that back. And I couldn't do it. But for the week, I mean, if we can average between 1,000 and 1,500, 
I mean, that's a great amount of money for just sitting here. And on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we traded for 15 to 20 minutes every day. That's all it took. I mean, one day we were out in 12 minutes. So a $500 payday on 12 minutes ain't bad. I'm just not going to um, uh, kid you. I had one bad day, and it was it was all due to me. Jeffrey, you can label the lines. Um, these are the quants. It's 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 labeled right here. And here's the major, the intermediate, and the minor. I mean, it's really easy with a, just a little bit of screen time because I'm calling these all out and talking about these intermediates. And the three line is irrelevant. All that matters is that, is that you got that blue candle halo. The automated system, Jeff, is going to be sending out signals on Monday. And it is based on this system. You're going to need everything to get a, to get a perfect long or a perfect short. And it is, it, it is um, forward tested for one year at about 82% winners, 18% losers. So it's a, it's a great system and we're gonna turn it on on Monday. Oh, we have, we have order flow, Larry. Sachs, man, if you don't have them, in the next package that goes out and you get it, everything will be in there. That's going to go out on Monday morning. You, you, if you have the software, you're going to get everything. Okay? So do not worry about that. No, thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. Oh, Merkel and Trump are speaking. Are you kidding? That's what everyone turns off their television. <laughs> Okay, Eric, I don't look at them. The slope, th these are called our moving average analytics. Now, we don't even use the mid 15, it's not there. Uh, I can just look at the 50 to tell whether it's green or red. Um, we don't use the MA diff, that's what we have to change. And this is just gross, this is just total number of contracts crossed for, for this session. And you can see, look at that number. And this is the a number of contracts crossing per minute. So this is this is really not usable right now. Eventually, the, the instead of having to estimate six points, it's going to be f reflected up here in the MA diff. But it's very very easy to see an overbought oversold market here. Mel, it, the three line is, is shown by the candle body outline. When it's blue, the three lines to the upside. When it's yellow, it's to the downside. When the candles are black, there's no three line alignment at all. So that's why we don't look at the three line. I could show it to you, but it's difficult to assess because it's changing intra candle. All you have to do is worry about the candle body halo. And that halo, you can change the thickness and you can change the color. You can make it whatever you like. You can make it down color, whatever you like, up color, whatever you like, thick candle body halo thickness. You just go to data series, you open it up, and there's the candle outline. I have it three. There's the wick thickness. I have it three. And then you go to the indicator. If I click on it right here, no. Nope. The three line will come up, and, when, and if you go to the three line, it, it, you can see right here, I have the down color outlined in gold and the up color in royal blue, but you can change, you can change these to any colors you like. You know, whatever, whatever. Now, some people like to trade with a black screen, so they have the candles highlighted in a, diff, in a different color. It's all configurable. How many, you know something, at the start of the session in the morning, Raymond, I think that's a little bit, um, I can't really tell you. I like to wait like three or four minutes. Because what happens is at the start of the session, a lot of traders 
have placed is a is usually a, a very big buy buy sell imbalance. You know, there are more buyers than sellers, but there's so little volume that imbalance can't be relieved. So all of a sudden the market opens, liquidity, the, you know, the tap opens, liquidity starts to flood the market, and you just don't know how it's gonna go. It's impossible to trade the open. So I just wait maybe three or four minutes. The first trade I took this morning was 9.34. That's all. And you, you can see when the market settles down. Um, and it only takes a couple of minutes. And, th and then you're in business to trade. It's not very long. Uh, good question, Eric. I go back 10 days right here. Days to load 10. That's all you need. I have about 25 charts working. If I put 15 to 20 days to load, it, I, I have so much data that my Ninja Trader jams because my computer jams it. If you have fewer charts up, you can give put more days to load, but it won't matter. Um, if you just want to do a retrospective analysis um, of one market, you know you can put in a hundred days as long as it's the only chart up. But 10 days is plenty. Now, the NT8 version will be out soon, Ray. It's on Sergio's to-do yesterday list. I, I, <laughs> it will, Farzand. It will, it will base its assessment only on the NASDAQ. And the X and dot will still plot. We put that default in. To tr because we knew it was going to be a problem for Russell users. So if you don't have a Russell feed, it will still give you a great plot. It just will be based on one market and not two. It won't not plot. You will get a good plot. The three line is the multi time frame analysis of order flow, stochastic, and momentum. And what I'll do is I'll show it to you here. I have it on this chart. It's already up. That's the three line. That's the three line V2. And now you can see this is the multi time frame assessment of momentum, multi time frame assessment of stochastic, multi time frame assessment of order flow. It's a very good indicator. You can only trade in this direction. One component is order flow based on the market delta of your two higher time frames. This tells you who's in control of the market, buyers or sellers. It's a component of the three line. You can't trade against this color. And you see during this short period where they're not in alignment, the candles go black. Then when they come back into alignment, the candles are now colored again in orange, then they come out, then they come back, then they go come in. Now you have no alignment here. Now you have upside alignment and up you go. So I put this to transparent. If you want to see it, you can. All you've got to do is just, I'll show you the, the indicator here. All you've got to do is just give plot zero, one and two, a color of yellow or orange, it doesn't matter. The, the, the algorithm will, will create an appropriate color. Anything but transparent. And your three line will trace out. That's all. So it's up to you whether you want to see it or not see it. All you really need are the candle halos. That's all you need. Al, right now we're not on NT8, but we'll, we will be on NT8 in about 10 days, a week to a week and a half. If you get this version, we will rotate you from NT7 to NT8 on our own. Um, you know, no upgrade, no add-on, no, 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 no nothing. Yes. 
what you see now, all the indicators are 1199. No, Joe, you never pay for an upgrade ever. You never pay for an add-on. Thank you for, for coming along. I really, I really, I welcome you. You're, you're a good guy. I've seen you make lots of comments. You will never pay for an upgrade or add-on. And we, if we got an indicator that created an absolute victory every time, you would get it for free. And we have people who've been in our room, honest, for, honestly, for, for four and five years who've never paid for an add-on or upgrade. So you will pay for nothing. Well, well, listen, the upgrade is every time we build a new indicator, every time we make a modification, every time we improve the workspace, we will give you that upgrade, give you that indicator, give you that add-on. You will always get that for nothing. Right now, you're getting our latest version. But a month from now, we can modify it if we see something that works better. And we'll just give that to you for free. Okay, I'll do that really quick, David. The Unirenko, it's 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 a it's a it's real it's a it's a really nice candle. Now I, here's what the ten five two means. The ten five two means that that this is why I like Unirenko much better than Renko, because that when you get a continuation trade, the two tick. This is what happens in the trend is every time you get a candle it moves up two ticks. Like if this candle goes up one, it doesn't form another candle. It's gotta go up two to form another candle. So, and since the candle body, it's gotta be five, and it's gotta move two to form another Unirenko, every candle in a trend trade is seven ticks. That's why our stop is eight. Because as long as we don't get a wick, we can ride these candle bodies up. Now, what the tick reversal means is, is that 10 plus two is 12. And that means on a reversal candle, you're always gonna get a 12 tick candle. See, four times three is 12. So it defines for you. Now, let's say we wanted a one Unirenko. A one Unirenko would give us a new candle every single tick. We've tried it. It's too fast. A three Unirenko is too slow. A new candle every three ticks. You can, you can make the candle body smaller by, by, by taking the five to four. But it makes the overall, it, it makes the candle too whippy. You can take the reversal on eight, also too whippy. So that defines all the parameters. A seven tick candle body going up, every two ticks you get a new candle, every time you get a reversal candle, this is a 12 tick candle, the next new candle is the 13th tick. That's the metrics of the Unirenko. Yeah, cross. Um, it, it, we're starting the we're starting the auto in the morning, uh, Monday morning. You can, yeah, sure. You, yes, you can cross. You can automate it. It works on NT seven, Bob. Yes. You know something, Biz. I, I like NT seven, and I have NT eight. Um, I, I just opened NT7. I've used it for a, a year or two. Uh, NT8 is a little more configurable. It's got a little more like, you know, it's it's like a uh, Cadillac with a little more trim um, and a little more, uh, you know, chrome. Um, but essentially, it's the same motor under the hood. And uh, I don't see a huge advantage to NT8. I really don't. Um, same templates, and it's the same code. So our moving, our moving from seven to eight isn't a huge job. That's why we'll be on eight soon. And if you want to use it, you can. But um, I, I'm very comfortable with NT7. I don't like it. It's very stable. It's a very good platform. 
Okay, well, the background color ray on the Unirenko isn't critical, but for sure, if you take a long trade with long background color, the probability of a trade winning is greater. And you're right, I should have talked about that. The background color is the multi time frame assessment of the E mini. It's looking at the two higher Unirenko multiples. Now, when it's pink, when it's this brown, pink, or light pink, they're all the higher time frames are aligned to the downside. This dark pink is the strongest, the light pink is the weakest, this tan color is the intermediate, but you are looking for a short trade. You can take a counter trend, but you're in tough territory for a counter trend. When you've got the blue, green, or cyan, like here, you're looking at the multi time frame alignment of the E mini to the upside. We don't believe in doing any assessment. Uh, let me just tell you the one amazing thing about this workspace nothing is created from data from the trading chart. The tr the, except the oscillator signal. Every other signal and movement is created from the other time frames or other markets. And that's why these are independent predictors of price movement. If they're linked to price on your trading chart, they become dependent predictors or dependent variables. In science, you only want to look at independent variables, and that's all we do. So if you look at this continuation trade, you've got this blue background. Now, it's a weak blue, but the multi time frame trend is aligned to the upside. Now, on Unirenko, it tends to move very fast, on range much slower. But you can get a good feeling from this background whether the market is trending to the downside or the upside. And it, it just helps you with the direction of your trade, although there's no absolute. What, you, what you're trading are what we discussed. We're trading that intermediate quant. We're trading the dots and the crosses. Uh, we're trading the oscillator signals. We're trading support and resistance. Um, we're trading off the 50, but the background bias should be noted when you, when you take trades. It will help you to take a trade. And, that, and as you get more and more screen time, when you take that roll on this pink background bias, the likelihood of a downside move is even greater. So all everything that we do is to increase the probability of a win. And it is important, Ray, just not a critical component. Sure you can, Joe. You can keep it on NT7. We'll always have it on NT7 and NT8 for you. I think, Bob, like right now, volume is getting actually better. As we move into the close and we're approaching 2,000 contracts a minute, now we're getting a little bit more. We're getting it to the point now where I think I would trade it. The problem with trading the close, it's oftentimes extremely choppy. And it's, it's tough, but that's good volume now. And you, and you see, you've got the confirmatory short dots, and you're probably going to break the 50 to the downside. You've got triple quants to the downside. Um, and let's see if it does. Just kind of sitting around there doing nothing. Now you see the background bias is up. So this is a this is a true counter trend trade and we're trading right into the 50. And we have trouble we may have trouble breaking the 50. Now but if you took the oscillator signal right here you had a winner. That's 1 3 5 ticks. We're looking for 4 on the first target. But we're getting we're getting to the point now where volume is halfway decent. Um, it, you know, it's kind of fading in and out. At two thousand contracts, definitely tradable. No, Phil, we don't have them yet, but we're going to make them for the forex markets. So don't worry. I mean, we're going to create these X's for every market. 
We just need a little bit of time to finish on the futures. And then we're going to put them on stocks as well. So we're going to have them on every market. And if you have the software, you obviously you're going to get all these dots. I'm just they're just going to be coming around. Well, you know something. You know, if you're looking at your one-minute candles versus Unirenko, David, you just can't really compare time to Renko, because remember, you're getting a new candle every two ticks but you're not getting a new candle on a one minute for every minute it's like trying to trade a, it's like trying to compare a five range to unirenko every five ticks you get a new range bar but here you get a new unirenko every two ticks so it's a very fast chart and this is why we had to adjust everything on it so you just can't compare the two. Uh, I, I mean, you just can't compare a time chart to a Unirenko. In fact, I don't think you compare you. I mean, the closest is range because range are time and tick independent. But the but this is really uh, um, it, I know its own unique animal here, so to speak. Um, and it moves very quickly. I mean, it blows through sometimes. See, we're moving down. I mean, that was uh, that was the prediction. And although although we have pretty paltry volume, we're doing it. Alan, you know, we'll, 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 that's something we're going to work on. Sure. Hey, listen, Phil, I, the next time I do one like this, I'll open it up with the Forex open because I would love to show it to you because it trades great. I, and we've got nothing but positive feedback from the people that trade Forex. I used to trade Forex uh, at two o'clock in the morning, but I'm a single dad. I have a 17 year old kid now and I can't keep up with him and, and get up at two o'clock in the morning. So uh, it was either give that up or, um, or wind up in a uh, wind up in an infirmat in an insane asylum, but the forex will give you great great signals. Uh, F Alan, just for you, we'll work on that F Dax. Okay, I'm going to put it on Sergio's list. Hey, listen, I, I, I Roger, I, I I I'm not happy. I'm not I'm not crazy about crude either. Uh, we're going to look at the uh, YM and we're going to look at the NQ. RTY is no good because it's got no volume. I mean, it trades like 30,000 contracts a day and you just can't trade it. So we'll see on a year of market replay data, um, which, is, which gives us a better win percentage, the YM or the NQ. It's 24 ticks, Bob. Joe, we'll look at that. We will look, honestly, bonds are in this assessment. Bonds and notes are a critical component to these, to these quant lines because that is, a, that, is a, that is an instrument that all the institutional people run to when they see and sense a lot of risk in stocks. You know, anytime there's, there's some major world crisis, they go to precious metals, bonds and notes. So, so we, 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 we do have them assessed in there. We do have FDAX quants, Alan. Very shortly, Eric. That's also on Sergio's to-do list, I swear to God. If I give the guy any more to do, he's going to have a nervous breakdown. Trust me, we're going to get – Eric wants an, wants a, uh, an audible alert on the oscillator, and that's easy for him to do when we will make one. Yes, Dennis, just give me a call. Give me 10 minutes afterwards, and then just give me a call. So I will send you a recording. Ted, I think that's a great strategy. 
as you approach the 50 and you're in a trade, tighten your stop. You can either do that or you can close the trade as it hits the 50. But tightening your stop, I also think, is a good is a potentially good idea. What I tend to see is it, it, it does take a bounce when it hits the 50. And if you tighten your stop, it could it could just like whack you out on the tighter stop and then continue. I mean, for me, I'm either going to take the trade out when it hits the 50, which which is, you know, I'm not going to lose anything on the pullback. Um, or I'm going to I'm going to make a gamble. It's going to break it. But what you're what you're saying of tightening your stop is definitely doable. And I think it's very, very, very reasonable. I mean, there's some things people say to me that I just don't agree with, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. OK, I no, I, I Neurali, I can't. Jose, with the 599, you only have the three line. You're going to get the entire software suite with the other 599. You're going to get the dots. You're going to get the everything. It entitles you to the full software suite. And that upgrade is only going to be good through through Sunday because we're, we're, we're sending up the price because it really, really is a, a, an amazingly good piece of software. And, I, and I, I've been around a long time, and I have seen a ton of junk. And I trade this thing every single morning. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you so much, Hala. No, I don't. I let that set. I, I try to get that trade all the way to the second target, Bob. And once in a while, I'll close the trade. But let me tell you, you'd be surprised how many second targets. Now, look how the market's pushing down. I mean, it's straining. And getting a little bit of a hernia, but you've got money flow out. You've got the dots right above it. It broke the 50. And look what's going on. Volume is picking up, and this is turning into an unbelievable trade. Now, right here, you're at the VWAP. And this might not be an unreasonable point to take the, to close the trade. But it's up to you. I mean, you, you've got yourself a very, you've locked in a lot of profit here. So this thing is humping down. Yeah, I, I know. You know, Sergio, uh, I, I keep him locked up in a, uh, in a closet on the weekends. And then I only I only pay him and feed him bread and water. Um, uh, Ted, I, w I I can do that for you, but I I'm not going to put up any any more ch charts. I I just can't I can't right now because it, it's approaching three thirty. Uh, you can you, Joe, you can absolutely run NT seven. It's eight. They are different, Fitzroy, but we what we do the entire workspace for you. We're going to set up your ATM. We're going to set up everything. We're going to log on to, to your computer, and we're going to go over all the inputs. You don't have to worry about any of that. David, the wicks come in simply to show you that there's indecision. And let, let me give you a good example. And always when I when I try to find one, I always never find a good one. Okay, um, hold on. Okay, all right. Let me. Okay, like how, like right here. Now this isn't a great trade. Why don't we take it right here? Let's say you're in this trade and you get wicked out. In other words, you're taken out by a wick. 
or you're taken out by this wick, this when you have a when you have a big upper shadow, this big wick, this is called a bull failure. And the reason it's a bull failure is that the bulls try to pull the market all the way up to here. And they failed. And the market wound up getting pulled all the way down to close and then fire. So if you want to get back into a trade, you get into a trade on a big upper shadow. Now, this is just short of a reversal. And you'd like the candle to close up and then you take the down candle. But short of that, remember, here's your value weighted average price. So you, you're broke's major resistance. The bulls try to push the market up, they fail, and you take this down close and down you go. That's why this is so much better than trading standard Renko, because it gives you, it gives you some idea of when the bulls fail or when the bears fail. And it does so by, by shooting out those wicks. And you can trade them. And remember, if a wick takes you out, it's always a decent opportunity to go right back in on that candle. And oftentimes you'll come right back for a winner. Felix, we, we always give you two licenses. So if you if you uh, if you want if you if you come aboard, we will give you two, one for your laptop and one for your desktop. Oh no, no for the automated, you have to use Ninja Cross because we're going to send the signal directly into your Ninja Trader control panel. And the, and the automated system is going to control and, and manage the entire trade for you. You can watch it evolve, but you need to have that on Ninja Trader. And you don't know when the signal is going to occur. So it's not like you can anticipate. If you trade on a discretionary basis, you could take the signals on any platform. But on the auto, if you want to let the auto do its job, remember, at, at, at some point in the very near future, the auto is going to be about on seven markets. And if you want to watch the E-mini and crude and gold and, uh, and the 6Z and the 6C and the 6A all at the same time, uh, good luck. I would just let the auto take the signals and manage for you. Now, I'm not sure the, uh, the, of the question. When you say slope number, I mean, I can show you the oscillator settings. Again, you're going to see these when you, when you get, get the software. There, nothing, nothing is hidden. I mean, here, uh, the RSI period is 20. The average period is 1. And the signal basis is, is, is the RSI, which we consider to be the, the cross of the 50. It's an exponential. So, so those are our inputs. And we can bury these inputs, but we don't. Because if you, know, if you want to play with it, you can. We don't recommend you do, um, but the inputs are right there. I know with 69,000 contracts, Roger, is, is pretty bad, honestly. I think that's pretty anemic. I mean, look, I mean, look at the, I mean, we've got a million contracts on the E-mini. We've got a half a million on crude, and we probably have three or 400,000 on gold, and probably the 60, probably on notes or a million contracts. I, I just think you're going to get slippage on the entry, and it's going to eat you up. I, I really do. I, I, I mean, I, 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 listen, I used to love the Russell, but right now it's just trading with too, it's, it's just trading too thinly. Uh, I mean, I just wouldn't do it. And now, I mean, I mean, and one other thing, and then I'm going to leave. Um, remember that the Russell used to be ten dollars a tick, so it used to be a nice market. Then they cut it to five a tick, so now it pays you no more than 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 the Nasdaq or or the Dow. And the Dow moves great, and we may wind up trading the Dow and not crude. 
I'm from what I see the Dow, I really like it. And we're going to work on those Dow dots. And then we're going to have the whole Dow uh, workspace formatted. So I don't see the, the big advantage to trading a thinly traded market and it only pays us five bucks a tick. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Jarrell. Jarrell, you're doing so good. Come on. I, I mean, you made money four days this week. You, you, you took, you, you got hurt just like I did on Thursday, but you came out of this week doing really well. You're, you're, you're going to be a great trader. Okay. Um, Fitzroy, Charlie Cochran's friend says, go ahead and get in. <laughs> so, okay. I'm just giving you that message. I'm only reading it to you open because it was typed by Frank. Automated system, Rick, is trading about 81, 82% to uh, winners to um, about 11 to 12% losers. That's how it's scaling on 12, on two, 24 months of market replay data. And it's going to go online on Monday. I love the YM too. And I think that we're going to go to it. I listen, guys, thank you so much. Um, have a wonderful weekend. I hope to see you guys aboard on Monday. And let's make some, let's make some money because I'm telling you the system works. And, uh, if you consider a $1,350 week to be a bad week, then we had a bad week. But we really did quite well. So have a great weekend. Um, be safe. Uh, ha have, have a lot of fun. And let's, um, let's be in and out of this market on Monday in 25 minutes and make 500 bucks or more. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Take care all. Thank you, guys. Thank all. Thank, thanks, guys. Thank, thank you all. Take care.